just wondering how many participants are we looking to enroll at Hasbro and exactly when is that enrollment period starting or has it already started? Perfect. Yeah, great question. And something I completely forgot. I apologize. Um, yeah, so across the three sites, we're looking at about 1,200 individuals, so about 400 to 500 at Hasbro itself. Um, and that includes both healthy children, so children who didn't have COVID, uh, as well as children who did have COVID but didn't have prolonged symptoms, and individuals who've had COVID and have prolonged sy symptoms. So really looking across that, that whole spectrum to really understand you know, the impact of these, these different, uh, different aspects. Um, we are recruiting both uh, individuals who had COVID, you know, across over the last 18, 18 months since the beginning of the pandemic, as well as uh, individuals who have acute infection currently. So with Delta, obviously, there's a lot of uh, particularly hitting children as they've gone back to school, uh, be, it, be it, you know, elementary school, primary school, high school, or even uh, secondary education. Uh, a lot of individuals having having acute infection right now would love to, to get them involved. Um, we are enrolling uh, and providing information, so not necessarily enrolling, but providing information and taking in individual contact information now, um, and you can get that at uh, uh, legacystudy.org, uh, annoyingly with an I, so L-E-G-A-C-I study.org. Um, you can enter your information and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you uh, very quickly. Uh, the hope is that uh, first person, first visit will be within the next four weeks. So uh, moving pretty quickly on this overall large scale project. And do you have a timeline of when you would have all your participants wrapped up? The, the goal is to get everyone enrolled in, in the next uh, 12 months. Uh, we would like to enroll everyone within the next eight months, uh, given, you know, obviously the time sensitive nature of, of what we're dealing with. Um, and, and then there, the study itself will, will last up to four years, depending on when those individuals come in and the severity of symptoms. Again, really trying to understand that long term effect. Um, so, you know, one visit is awesome, um, but we'd certainly love to have people stay in the study for, for that, that full sort of full, full four years. Gotcha. And can you just walk us through exactly what families and these pediatric patients should expect to be part of this study? What's going to happen and what they have to go through? How many times they have to visit the hospital? Yeah. So uh, early on, it's not too too crazy. So we have sort of a, sort of a tiered um, assessment schedule. So tier one is really kind of a light touch, fully remote, really just trying to understand, you know, yourself, your family, uh, you know, how many children are in the family, how many adults are living in the household, who had COVID, uh, you, you know, symptoms that you've had. Uh, so those sort of general demographics. Um, we'll then move into sort of tier two, which actually is a little bit more involved. The first thing there is antibody and antigen testing to confirm rule in or rule out um, COVID uh, infection. Um, and then, uh, and that's not sort of a, you know, a decision point as to whether you remain in the study, but really just trying to understand uh, whether you had flu-like symptoms that was actually COVID or not. Uh, and then getting into some of the more involved uh, assessments such as, as say some of the cognitive games that we play uh, some of them are iPad tasks you know um, following a, a dog around a screen for example these sorts of things that you typically do um, uh, measures of lung function so just you know how much can you exhale so the usual things that you do in a, in a, you know, a doctor's office um, cardiovascular function so heart rate blood pressure um, neuroimaging, which is on a low field MRI system. It basically looks like a gigantic R2D2, as it were. Um, so uh, low field system, nothing to be afraid of. And that's an actually an optional uh, element of the, of the, uh, of the study. Um, EEG, which makes you look like you have a helmet of all sorts of wires coming out. Um, again, optional, but, but informative. Uh, and then some exercise type tasks. So, um, you know, running on a treadmill again to look at that cardiovascular function, lung function. Um, unfortunately, we do get uh, biological samples. So that can be things like spit, um, hair, uh, and um, blood. Uh, but the blood is not super invasive. It's actually with a little device that you put on your, your shoulder. Um, and it takes about two minutes to, to get a small, a small vial of blood. Uh, it's pretty painless, even down to infants. They don't, they don't mind it. Um, certainly a lot easier than a, than a vascular draw or something. So 